Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. And listen, you can paint this. Today, together, step by step, you and me, we're going to paint this abstracted, which means in this particular case, a lot easier, sunset with sailboats. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He's going to be tracking me with cameras so you can see every part of the acrylic technique process. That means whatever I'm doing, you're going to be able to see in high detail and be able to duplicate at home. And that's the whole goal which is like I paint a thing and then you paint a thing and I paint a thing and then you paint a thing. And at the end, we both have a lovely painting with some sailboats. Now, I really want to challenge you guys today that this is the day. If you've been holding off, if you haven't taken up a painting yet, you've been watching, let this be your painting because it's beautiful. It's beautiful for the mind to paint. The techniques are really restorative. I think you're going to enjoy it, and I bet you're going to surprise yourself at how creative you actually are. I'm ready to just jump on in, John. Are you ready? I am. All right, let's get in here. See, I already, you already got some materials out over here. I got my material. Didn't I put my materials out in a pretty, pretty way? You did. I did. I'll put my reference to the side so I remember what I'm doing. Otherwise, who knows what I'll paint. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a 9 by 12 surface. Um, you could use a bigger surface. You could use a smaller surface. I'm doing this on an artboard, but look, acrylic paper is fine. Acrylic canvas is fine. You may have different challenges as you change the surface that you're painting on, but they're all meant for acrylic paint. So it's not something you really, really got to worry about. On here, we have, as we like to do, a wish given to us by the community. And today's wish is kindness, understanding, and awareness around the autistic community. So I think that's really beautiful. And my personal message around this is we're all really different. And because of that, we need to make room for everybody. I mean, we need to Pete's Dragon mm -hmm. this because there really is. It takes so many different types of human beings and so many different types of ways of looking at the world to give us half a chance of being a decent species. We've got to celebrate the differences in each other instead of being worried about them. So I hope that that's something that I see from my children and your children in the future. It's just understanding for all the ways that we get to be human beings. Mm -hmm. All right. So I love that. Good wish on our palette, which is our favorite place to be. Let's look at our palette. We have cadmium red, cadmium yellow, phthalo green, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, burnt umber. Mars black, and titanium white. So these are heavy-bodied acrylic paints, but you could do this painting with craft paint like the kinds you find in the bottles. You just wouldn't do as much water on your brush because that paint's already pretty wet. Hmm. I'm ready to just hop on in here. I am, right. I'm ready to get into the project. Right, you guys ready yep. to do this because you're doing it? Today, you're doing it? Water. Come on, you can do it. All right, so here we are. We got the surface. I'm going to do a quick thing. I used a watercolor pencil to sort of write that wish in. So I'm going to take a very barely damp brush and just brush this into the universe and let the universe take that, take this over, you know, get it to the bigger space. And I'm going to create a horizon line. Now, whenever you're painting water, it's super duper important that your horizon line be level. Yeah. Otherwise, it looks like your planet is pouring out into space somewhere. My favorite tool for that is a T-square. Get excited about it all the time. I love them very much. They're not expensive. If you don't have one, you can use the fold of a paper towel, which is squared. But if you've got one, it's good to have. Now, I'm going to use my watercolor pencil to just give me a little bit of a guide. And I'm going to come up not quite to the halfway point, which is right here, but just down a little bit. So what we're seeing is we're doing a top-heavy sky. It's heavier on top. I'm going to get a handle on my T-square. <laughs> Look at it. I flipped it. You flipped the T-square. Whenever your surface is giving you any trouble for any reason, go ahead and flip it. Now, I'm looking at my reference, and I'm looking at my guideline, and you can see I'm about, whoosh, almost a quarter inch off. That's funny that I can tell that by sight. <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird, kind of funny. It's not really that important that you be specific. It's important that I be specific <laughs> because I'm a teacher. Yeah. So it's a much bigger deal that I do things a particular way. Not as big of a deal if you guys do things a particular way. 
Now on the front of the canvas, I'm gonna do a thing. I'm gonna take this brush, I'm gonna take off the extra water. This is a number 26 bright, it's a short handle. And I'm gonna brush just back and forth the smallest amount of water. I'm doing that because I just want it to be a little bit damp. I'm gonna load up my brush with white. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some white on the surface. Can you, you can't see that because it's white oh, yeah. on white. No, you, you totally can. It's no. invisible. It, I'm, are you going to work on the uh, edge of your uh, easel over there? I'm just curious. No, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm sorry. I got all oh, no, weird. It's okay. I got all to the right in some weird kind of way. But I don't want to do that. It, now I'm going to get just a smidge of my white. I want you to be comfortable. So yeah. You, no, I, no, I wasn't going to. I just realized I'd gotten off center. I was just moving the camera. Down. Yeah, you can see the little, the white layer on there. Though. Okay. So you can see I'm taking a very light yellow color and I'm just brushing let your body even move with it, brushing back and forth. Can I ask you something? Very nice. Wait, wait. Yes, you can. After I get the next few layers in, because I got to go fast. All this right, is go. my go fast, and then ask at the red. Cool? Okay. Yeah. Deal? Yep. Cool. All right. So, I'm going to get some more paint on my brush. You can see that I flip it over, right, to just sort of give me a hand here mm -hmm. in loading it. What I want is lots and lots of pigment in my brush. You see, I came down from where I had my other yellow a bit. And I'm brushing back and forth. And then I'm going to just back and forth coming up. And look at how I made a nice kind of gradation between those yellows. It's, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. That's sort of fun. Now I'm going to come down a little bit further. This is fun for me. And I'm going to get some of my red. Oh, this is a good red. And I'll just come right across, following my line that I gave myself so I could, you know, be somewhat level. You definitely want an art teacher that's on the level. <laughs> Levelish. Levelish. Level like. I'm just putting a nice little band. This hasn't dried yet, so I can get my yellow into my red and then continue to come up, like brushing back and forth. There we go. Now I wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And where those two paint joints meet, just brush again. Look at that. What a beautiful blend. And if anything gets off level, you just clean it up with your brush. You get any drips, you just yeah. clean it up. Now I can take any question. Okay. So when you first did that, you put some white paint down first. Mm -hmm. And then you put white paint and yellow paint over the top. Yep. Was that, now your surface was white. Yes. Did you do that just to slicker up the surface so it'll blend in? Yes. Okay. And also to make sure it's not overdoing because as you do the sky, right? So like, say you were like, oh, I don't like how light that is up there. Then it's going to be a little bit easier for you to come in, right? And say, oh, I, I want this to be maybe a little bit more yellowed, but you won't overdo. See it'll, how we didn't overdo? It's it'll a blend protection. easier. Just back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. See, and then it just gives us that nice little straightation, and you can soften those transitions. See, even coming down. What your goal is, is you don't want a stripe. You're trying to avoid stripes. So if I come up with my brush from the orange, then it gets up into that yellow, but you can see it makes a nice little blend. So you're just trying to avoid candy corn it's going to be a little candy corn but you don't want it to be like an orange stripe and a hard yellow stripe and a hard yellow white stripe if Actually, that makes sense oh yeah now if you're still wanting to blend further you can take a blending brush this is a synthetic uh varnish it's really kind of a synthetic mop i don't use goat hair because it sheds all over the canvas yeah and you can also soften this further look at that there's no end. So you can blend, 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 and make atmosphere and have a good time. Okay, what was, was that the question about that was the, the question. candy corn? The, was well, no, no, it was about the white. Mm -hmm. Like, why did you put the white down? Does that for blending purposes? What was that about? So over the years, about five years being on YouTube now, um, I have learned from talking to students that there are certain things that kind of trip you guys up, in, in areas where I know you're going to need a lighter banding. If I put down a little bit of white, that kind of like, it's not like liquid white like Bob Ross used to do, but it's a similar concept. 
when you come into blend, it's going to be smoother. You're going to not over darken and it helps you out a little bit. Hmm. Thing I've learned, things you learn along the way. I'm going to sip my coffee. Are you yeah. sipping your coffee? I mean, I, I'm coffee less. That's inhumane. Coffee. Everyone, you guys need to protest for the inhumane treatment of stunt hands. It is not okay for him to be working without coffee. Well, after, after the show, I'll get one. All right. Well, then we better get going. <laughs> So here I have my phthalo green and my phthalo blue, and I'm going to pull them forward and mix them together. I'm going to mix a little stronger to my green. So it's almost two parts of the green to one part of the phthalo blue. A little more teal than turquoise hmm. is what we're talking about. Woo! <laughs> Fun times. So the first thing I'll do is I will rinse my brush out of all of its pigment. I'm not even going to change yet because why would I change? There's no need yet. And I'm going to load up with this Prussian. This is a dark blue. If you don't have this, just do the phthalo blue. You know, you can always add a little bit of dox purple to it or a little bit of black to deepen it and get an alternate color. I've also included exchanges in the description. So my trick here will be to come along and make sure my horizon line is good. Mm. Carefully. See, I'm careful. I do. Now, if you're very new to painting, you may actually find it's kind of a challenge to do straight lines. Heck, if you're experienced in painting. There are days it's a challenge to do straight lines. The horizon levelish. Levelish. So I've added a little Prussian blue to my aqua, my teal. Isn't that nice? Coming back and forth a bit. As I go forward, I can always get a little bit of my brown to deepen it. See how you do? A little bit of brown in there for the front. Ah, isn't that great? Mm. So similar kind of blending and thought. Now here, be aware that being level back and forth, back and forth in your brush stroke is very, very helpful in implying that there's water. And you can right now, before anything is dry, there are two kind of light reflections that happen on this water. There's a bit of light around the boats and then there's the hard reflection of the sun coming down. So I'm going to take a bit of my yellow onto my brush, as you might want to. And right here, I'm gonna go ahead, while it's all still wet, on the edge, this edge of my brush back and forth. And then if I go flat, I can make bigger strokes. So you can kind of see how I'm doing. Just start to talk about that yellow. See how we're doing? Yeah. Just a little right here that I'm talking about. Now, do you remember that blending brush I had earlier? Mm -hmm. It's about to be my buddy. Come here, my buddy. <laughs> Get the moisture out of it. You don't want to use these wet. Yeah. You want them to be a little bit dried out. They can be mildly damp, but you wouldn't want it to be wetting your skin. Brush, 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 brush. What could you use if you did not have this cool brush? Mm. You could use a soft, clean brush. That's all you need. Just It could be a bright. It doesn't even have to be a mop. That is a fallacy. That is not true. Just whatever you got. Well, yeah. Just, yeah, but you, gotta, you may have to work harder. I've added a little white to my yellow this time, as you can see. And then I can come through here and just very softly allow the glow to take place. Isn't that great glow? Yeah. I love the glow. I love the nightlight. So we have that going here. Let's add some more awesome color into our abstracted, not abstract, but abstracted. Totally mm. different things. Sounds the same, isn't the same. And you can't believe it until you get into an art show and hear people like really debate that issue. <laughs> it is not the same. Because <laughs> if you think sports fans have opinions, you haven't done nothing to you've been around artists. <laughs> We got all kinds of opinions. I'm adding a little white to my mix here. 
And I'm going to come here and try to sort of imply in some tonality. Everything is still wet. If your paint is drying on you too quick, what you can do is to let the paint dry and then do a coat, do the whole technique on top of it again. Oh. Sometimes the acrylic will dry slower on the second coat than it did on the first coat. You go for the layer action. If you can, yeah, you can go for that layer. Look at, but look at that beautiful water blend. Isn't that just, whoa? I, mean, I love it. Uh huh. Get myself some more paper towels on my. What day is today? Is it Friday? It is a Friday. 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 Friday's a fun day. Friday. Friday. Uh, 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 uh. Every time I have a lot of personality. It is. I go from 98% likes to 97% likes. <laughs> it's Friday the 12th. The 12th? It's not the 13th. Well, then it's a happy, happy day. It would be happier if it was you know, Friday the 15th because Friday your know, 15th is a payday. Everybody likes to get paid. Oh, well, that is the best Friday is the 15th Friday. All right. While everything is still wet, I'm going to load up my Prussian again into my brush because I just love doing that. And I'm going to go ahead and darken. Look at how I'm darkening that. Mm -hmm. That outer edge there, not fun to darken. You know, so we're really kind of thinking about that light space. Now I'm going to brush from the right to the left because I don't want to over darken that edge. And there we go. And you'll see me use my paper towel. Look at me work that paper towel. All right. That's looking so good. Yeah, it is. I'm liking it. Lots of fun stuff still left to do. Okay. I'm going to let this all have a rest for a second. You need to try As it. it'll want to, and I can do the next layers in just a second. But I can come up and start to think about my clouds if this is dry, and it is. Now, that's going to involve me using a slightly smaller brush um, just, to, just to have a little more control. So let's downsize a bit. Now, this is a long handle. It's a number six. I'm going to dip my brush in water. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more of my teal color into my blue here to begin it. To begin it. And I'm going to make one bank of clouds. So I'm going to come right to here. Maybe a little bit higher. And I'm going to just come across. Yeah, that's nice. Mm. Well, that's a cloud. How does a stripe become a cloud? Well, in my very cool stylized way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a really fun swept bank. So you see how I came and made that loop? Make a little loop. Sometimes it's nice to make a fun smaller loop. This loop could be bigger. Right? I like to put small bumps whenever I have the big bumps. And then we're going to we're going to come and we're going to make a forward bump. What? That's a cool shape. Look at you go. Now, if you don't draw, I have a traceable. You are welcome to use those anytime you need them. Fun to do the loop clouds. There's a little loop. Look at that. He's going to have a friend in a second come forward, but it's just fun to do. Now, when I have him in, I'm going to go ahead and get my white on my brush. If I need to get some water on there to improve flow, I will. Just go ahead and add some highlights and brush down. So 
a lot of times we'll think about clouds in this very hyper-realistic way. We can also think about them in the symbolic way. What I have here is sort of like old school emoji of cloud. <laughs> the symbol of the cloud. Right, and just come here. He's got a dark friend in front of him, so it's not going to be such a big deal. And you can always just improve a little bump. So it's sweepy. It's got some kind of tonality, doesn't it? Isn't it cool? Mm -hmm, I like it. Exaggerate it because we're having fun today, aren't we? Yeah. Go ahead and take a highlight and come along the swoop. If you paint and exaggerate the swoop, it only gets better. So see how I just grabbed the white? And the trick is, is that there's this energy, this flow of cloud. That you start to represent as you make these clouds. It's got to have a little bit of a drag because he's like the furthest little, he's the furthest one back. I'm going to go ahead and get some more paint on here. A little more of my blue mixed into it. Now this lower line will just be below the one above it. All I got to do is just sort of make that upward space. I always have a blast. Now, once I have that in, I'm going to come back here. This one's going to sweep up. This leap loop is going to go a little bit forward. That's a kind of forward loop. It faces forward, but I'm still going to make sure that my flow has that same curvature. And then let's give it another little loop back. Look at that. That's nice. Sometimes you got to get excited. Now, this one, again, I want it to be face forward and maybe a little bit taller. So I'll come down like that. There's a teardrop. Kind of a little shape that I've got going. And I can join them here. When I go to layer the other clouds in front of it, that will work really, really well. It'll feel very forward facing. Oh, I got a little excited there with my second little bump. <laughs> you see, I got excited. I was yeah. like, yay. So see, we're just paying attention to the direction of the brush stroke. When you're trying to do what I'm doing, pay attention to the brush stroke. You know, make sure that you're watching me do it first before you go ahead and do it if you've never done it before. Because there'll be lots of little things I'm doing that would help you succeed in your goals. Make another little bump here. Meaning this whole first structure in. A bump here. And then they'll connect here. So that's this most backward facing cloud. Very, very cool. And what do we do? We get right into our white, don't we? Mm -hmm. And we start to paint in those swirls. Down. Right here, so I can brush it down. Notice lately that I have been standing with my hand on my hip like I'm a pirate. Why are, are you? I don't know why. It's a new thing. I don't know why it's happening. I'll let you know when I know why. If they recruit you. As um, a pirate? No one's recruiting pirate, me as a pirate. We'll, we'll know because you'll come up with an eye patch. No one is going to recruit me as a pirate. I don't know. I'm I... not jumping off of nothing. <laughs> it's there's, not happening. There's some, there's some pirates in the local grocery store handing out pamphlets. <laughs> I mean, they try. I'm just saying I'm not a good recruit. Have, have interest <laughs> in the high seas. None. None. <laughs> this is fun. So again, you can see how the brush strokes help imply the shape and motion of our wonderful little cumulus here. Mm -hmm. Our stylized cumulus, which I love doing. Just brushing that forward, enjoying that moment. Are you enjoying your moment? I hope so. Oh, yeah. All right. That's looking good. I think it's great. Anywhere it's not clean, you can always go through and give it a lining, right? Ooh, that's good. Give it a little 
edge. I make sure that there's a nice edge. I, you know, I'm, I'm being fussy. I could come back a little bit later. I know I'm going to be lining stuff, so now I'm going to definitely get right more into my impression. I'm going to add my teal into that. You can see that's a much darker little cloud color. And I will just come down here just a little bit. I need a, another little level, I think. The blue, just darkening it up. And let's make some more. We don't want to make the exact same bump ups. We want to change it up and let the other cloud peek through. That's the layer. Who's got layers? Your cloud's got layers. There we go. Just doing a stylized cloud. Hmm. Does your cloud have style? I need style. Gotta have style in your cloud. You really do. Cloud needs that style. All right? You need that style. Now, if I need to, I'm going to grab just a bit of my black over here. See how that darkens it so much? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead from the bottom and make sure that this ends in a nice point. I'm going to brush that up because I want that to be very dark coming up. Covering all the yellow. It may take a couple coats if you have very inexpensive paint. All right, you want to have that there. I'm going to get a little of my white into the mix here. And brush in those little highlights. The little highlights go in. Sometimes when clouds in their natural state just evade us by finding this other way to talk about them, we can create beautiful cloud structures, stuff that's going to get us tons and tons of compliments online, hmm. right? Brushing that up. A little white, a little just pure pression. There we go. Brush, 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 brush. Now, if I feel like I've got to trim this, I can come back with this yellow color if I want, or come in with a clean brush and clean up a line, any line I need to. See how I can do? Mm -hmm. And we got to do another little cloud over here. Let's grab that up. Missed my palette so it doesn't dry. Whew, like a power mister today. Careful with that thing. <laughs> so this guy, this little fellow, right? I can even come down a bit from the cloud in front. And let's give another little rise up. We need a little bit of the cumulus to come right here in the middle. So I'm going to bring this up. I'll definitely brush forward, but that's why I got to bring it up. And then it's got maybe a little friend. Pop out a little friend. You can do little bits too. Look at that. Little, little ups. Little loops. Let them little loops show. And then a little wave. That can become a loop. Look at my loops. Aren't they cool loops? I like them. Little abstracted clouds. Not the it same is. as abstract. It's abstracted. You're getting all technical on me. Well, because someone's going to come by and go, that's not abstract. Abstract is non-objective expression. It shouldn't look like anything. Well, in purest abstracted terms, yes, but there's many abstract movements. And abstracting objects has been a Privilege of artists since the modern art movement. And what that basically means is instead of painting things entirely representationally, I can simplify or alter elements of my project, abstracting their nature, yet still conveying a very stylized and beautiful painting. Hmm. Bump, 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 bump. You said some pretty. Some big stuff right there. Yeah, that was 
high level thinking. So just a little bit of my white in here. And I love, you know, that, that little loop of white where we're kind of showing the wind blowing through. Super fun for me. One more. And this little fellow has a third one forward. Take it right into here. Really make sure we get a nice, nice, nice amount of that. I'm going to come down a bit. Like you do. Like somebody does. I'm going to mm -hmm. get some of my teal. And again, going to make another little bank. And always make little bumps. There's a little bump. Little bumps happen along the way. Maybe another little bump right there. Now this is dry, so I'm going to come back with my dark color and brush this up a little bit, as you do. And if this is dry, I'm going to come up and add that second coat. Pull that up. Pull that dark color up into our cloud shape. There we go. Beautiful. Graphic. Abstracted cloud. Very stylized. Now I might get a little of my phthalo turquoise again and some white. And let's just maybe pull this cloud forward a bit, even more than in the reference, I think, just to help it really shine. See? Mm hmm. There we go. These are even better than the than the first design. <laughs> ah, iteration. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, I like these clouds. Are they looking? Got to sip my coffee and have a contemplative moment. Contemplative. Contemplative moments. We can, we can, those are good, good times. Those are have. good times to have. You got to have your contemplative moments. It's hard without coffee to contemplate anything. Is it? <laughs> I'm going to make another little bank. I think actually I might make this bank come forward in front of a loop that I already had. Kind of do a really intense layer. So I've got into to that little turquoise, but then this bump can be like a little bit less. Yeah. And then maybe that one comes up a little more. Just so we can see it. Oh, that's nice. A little forward bump. Still just pulling that all forward. Having fun making layers. Making layers. There we go. Just having some rows. You can see I'm brushing the darker value up in. How are you guys doing on your abstracted clouds? Really good, I think. Are you guys just rocking it? You're like, what? This is like, why don't we always do clouds like this? Because for many of you, this will be like an aha moment. Not all of you, but for many of you. Mm. Because we're all different and sometimes different things will click in our brain. And that's, you know, the theme of this painting. We're all different. That's okay. We get there different ways. We sometimes have different brush strokes and different styles. Sometimes we might see the world a little differently. That's okay. We won't all die from it. Of course, these days, maybe. 
What if we could just be cool about the differences? We would be awesome. I'm getting a little more green on here. And just play. Whoa. I don't know who would Skype you right now. You know what's surprising is that my machine wasn't muted. That is also surprising, but I'm just wondering how that would even happen. Well, I, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of people who have my Skype number. And so what I found surprising and shocking was that Is my that machine, it doesn't happen more often? Well, well I, no, because I had been flipping back and forth between the broadcast and uh, I hadn't picked up any noise yet. So I had assumed that everything was muted. Skype told me otherwise. Skype is helpful that way. It just wouldn't let me know. We are not sponsored by Skype. <laughs> 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 okay, so now to finish those nice clouds off in their little, little bangs, I'm going to get a round brush. Round, 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 round. Something that I have a nice control over. I'm looking for one of my particular round brushes on my red handles. I know I have them. I just may not have one in here, but I do. I did. I found it. And I'm going to get my brush with just a little bit of white and a tint of the color of the clouds, right? You won't want a lot of it. You can see me dip in the water and come around here and swirl to improve the flow of my paint. And all you're going to do is just take this lighter outline. Camera. And go ahead and give each bank of clouds their own distinctive lining. So this kind of thing, you know, that's like a comic effect. These type of flattening and lining moments. You just pick each cloud bank that you made. And it gets a different set of lines. And that also helps it pull oh, yeah. into its own little space, right? Let's give this one a nice little lining. Ah, oh, now we've got that little bank of clouds. Very distinctly there, isn't it? Yeah. And feels very, very cloud-like. Where has this been? Right there in the art vault. Among the infinite number of techniques and ways that artists can accomplish a painting. Even though you're a beginner, you should benefit from that catalog too. Enjoying all the ways that your predecessors have figured out to accomplish their art goals. <sighs> breathing in, breathing out. After this cloud bank, we'll take a couple questions and I'm going to sip my coffee. Mm. Or I'm going to just sip my coffee if there's no questions. So coffee sipping is happening. Um, you know. You can. I'm going to admire I'm my handiwork and I'll let you kind of catch up and admire you, yours because I know many of you paint live with us. And if you're here today painting live, I want to say thank you for spending your time, your valuable time with us. If you're here on the replay, I'd like to repeat that sentiment and say thank you for spending your time with us. Mm -hmm. Because you could paint a lot of places and I appreciate that you chose to paint with us. <laughs> yeah. no. I do genuinely mean that. I just yeah. realized how funny it is on YouTube. You could paint a lot of places. But I appreciate you paint with us. All right, so I scroll back up and I read it. My lips are pink oh. today. All right, handful of questions. Mm, mm. If uh, a surface is pre-gessoed or pre-painted out of the package, do you need to gesso it again? Mm -mm. Do uh, You don't need to gesso, period. It is a preparation to improve a surface. Mm. Uh, artists tend to do it on unprimed canvases because it's really tough to paint on raw linen, just raw. Um, but with, with acrylic paint very specifically, pretty much it paints on most stuff. You may have to give that surface tooth. And acrylic likes to stick to acrylic. Um, gesso is cheaper than highly pigmented paint. And so it's a nice option. Like if you want to like get a fresh start on a painting you didn't like, and you want to gesso over it, that's a good way to do it just for, for cost savings and because it gives you a lot of tooth, but it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. So if ever you don't have gesso, just paint with it. Over paint. Now, if you're using... Uh canvas paper or canvas pad mm -hmm. you need to stretch those you don't need to stretch it i would if it's not affixed in some way i would tap tape it down with low tack tape so you can get it up without tearing the paper and i might 
seal the paper before painting with you could do gesso there that could help your that could improve your experience i found a coat of gac 100 gac 100 which is a polymer right. medium not paper canvas pad where it's actually the canvas oh then just tape it down do you need to stretch that canvas no okay no just not unless sure. you're putting it over stretcher bars you, okay but you don't need to put it on stretcher bars Okay, just want to make no, sure. There's tons of ways to frame it without ever putting it on a stretcher bar. And everyone would like to know, really enjoy watching you while they're at work. Do a good Yay. job. Yes. Do a good job. Hope, bring, bring the happiness of art back into your work world and explain that you were doing a service for everyone. Yes. That's you were, you were in, innovatively thinking. And you were, you were heightening your intellectual capacity by mm -hmm. stimulating other parts of your Brain, so you're going to come back from this even more ready Improving to Proving your value as an employee Absolutely. to everyone around you. <laughs> we can, dude, <laughs> challenge me. Challenge accepted. <laughs> so I'm going to come back and I'm going to do some of these moody effects that we have down here. Moody effects are fun. What makes them moody? Well, because the dark blue, that's kind of, you know, if you see that sort of horizon and you've got this, you know, deep pressure that's happening in the background here. And it's coming forward. So you come forward. I've got this. Something to know about the Prussian. It is very transparent. And hopefully John can show that to you. Oh, yeah. So it's not even on my pro paint. It's, it's still a hue. It's still a slightly transparent paint. I'm going to go like this. Now, there we go. Just moving it forward. While I'm here, I can take my soft brush. And even though the paint around it isn't wet, look, I can still soften that effect. Mm. So a lot of times, it, if you have the right tool, you can even blend once the paint is dry. Gotcha. That's crazy, right? Didn't know that. I don't think I really demoed that that much on the show. I'm taking my pure CAD and I'm going to come underneath here and cleaning up that line. And even going back into the little pression a little bit. And then I'm going to sort of come over here. We're darkening this up. Now, if I got too much of the blue into my brush, I just rinse it out and get some fresh red. And I'm going to go ahead again and take my blending brush and soften these transitions. What's the trick? Make sure it's not too wet. Because if it's too wet, it's going to be going to yep. be a pain. So I'll take this one. This one isn't as wet. Look at that. Wow. Can't beat that. Oh, got a drip. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's important to know. Like you can come back and fix a drip if you've got a drip or you've got a thing that you don't want to have. You can correct it. This is coming to, coming along quite quick. Oh, no. It's just a fun, wonderful day. Actually, I think I'm going to get into my... My phthalo turquoise. I'm going to switch into my phthalo turquoise for these little bits of highlight in blue. I just need to have some of that there. So as long as I have the green and blue close to each other, I can make a phthalo turquoise in a half second. Let's load up with some just blue. And we're going to make little implied cloud banks with these short strokes. See how I'm short stroking? Yeah. Little short strokes making little delicate edges. And darkening some spots in our blue. Darkening some. Come here and uh, darkening some. Short, 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 short. So these are the little kind of dark and distant clouds, right? Mm -hmm. You can always add a little more blue if you need to to the back here. Rinsing out. And while it's having a dry, I'm going to go ahead and get some just yellow. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to make myself a nice little sun. The beginnings of one. 
a little half circle. The beginnings of my sun is a half circle. And I'll go ahead and get some yellow into this and come around and make some of those short strokes all around my sun. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. And then softly brush them in. If the paint isn't wet, you may need to add a little red to it to get a blend. If it is wet, the yellow will blend in on it all on its own. Some more red here. That's fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Playing with the colors. So now we have this sort of uneven little stroke there. That's starting to come into place. I'm going to get my turquoise, which is my blue and my green together. Just put a lot of white into that. Isn't that a pretty color? Come to the top of these little dark shapes that you made. And just highlight them a bit. Look at those distant little clouds. And that implies them quite nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. Just wiggling my brush and softening any edges that need softening. Because sometimes you need to soften your position. And what you're going to find is that these colors play against the red really, really well. And it gives you just a deeply beautiful effect. Easy to deepen the blue anywhere you need to. Also for effect. And now I'm going to take this sort of interesting thing. I'm going to take a little of my orange. And I'll mix a smidge of my phthalo green into it. And I'm going to come down from my sun, kind of brushing this out. Not nice. Yeah. Just a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot. We're just making a little blend. And you can probably guess by now I'm gonna take one of my soft brushes and brush that softness back in to that little mix. That's nice. So that's showing that soft transition, and you've got your other soft transition. I can always come along my horizon line and improve that line. Just make sure that everything appears level and far away. As you do. <laughs> I'm going to grab some of my yellow and just a smidge of my phthalo turquoise and some white. Just a bit of this. Making this sort of light color. It's going to go over the surface of the water. I'm not pressing hard and I'm just brushing this off. Off my brush. I'm, okay, I'm doing that left-leaning thing, babe. I'm sorry. That's okay. Have them then catch it. You're doing just fine. I'm going to just brush a little color down. Now you're, you're using your long-handled brushes a bit more. Yes. And I'm going to get back here and soften that effect before it dries. See how much farther stand, she's standing back. So you want to talk about that a little bit? So when you have a long-handled brush, it allows you to get back from the canvas a bit. And just softly brush that. Too much of it, but we want a little bit there. And it will allow you to see what you're doing better. It's like really hard to paint sometimes over a table looking down. Mm. It, uh, it can really confuse your eyes to what's happening. It can be so confusing. These times are so confusing. <laughs> These times in painting, long handle, short handle, what are we to do? I'm going to make some of my phthalo turquoise again. And I'm going to come back here and brush in. And I'll just brush a couple little strong aspects here. You can always grab a little of your Prussian and mix that in. You can see I'm coming from the edge. The Prussian naturally is a little transparent. So. Very. You can get a nice blendy effect there, huh? You can. Between the glazing, this blending brush, 
which I'm sure you guys are all in love with now. <laughs> Wait, where is that in my life? Uh-huh. <laughs> John and the team can tell you where you can find those. Oh, there are links in the description down below. Of no, course. I don't think I put one in the description. Well, there will be there after will the be. show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, this is, I mean, especially as you get further back on this painting, it looks really cool. Oh, it's just pretty, and it's just, it's just fun, and I love doing it. Really, really nice. I'm going to get my brush here. Actually, I may switch to my round brush just to give myself a little more control, as you might want for the mix next Mix it up bits. a little bit. Huh? You're going to mix it up a little bit? You know, mix it up a little bit. I'm going to get my round brush and load it up with some yellow paint. Now, let's come here. Give ourselves just a little yellow. I'm going to maybe kiss some sky here with some yellow. You can just pop any little bits of that. That What you just want to make sure is that the ends are tapering and random and that it doesn't have any distinctive squarish brush strokes. And I'm going to get a little of my white. You can go ahead and it's fun to, in the center of your sun where it's maybe more hot, Go ahead and add a little of that. Oh, so good, so good. Reflection. Mm. You guys ready for a reflection? I don't know. It's dry, so it's ready. You want this part to be dry. I'm going to go ahead and just grab a little of my red. And I might grab some of my teal into it. And can you see how it darkens it just a smidge? You don't want to use that much because you'll turn it dark, dark, but you just want a couple values. Back here, I'm going to make shorter little brush strokes. I'm using the edge of my brush. And I'm just going to talk about the little reflections of the sky and sun coming down. They'll be stronger up here. Okay. And longer. But what they always will be is horizontal. You don't want them to be diagonal. It will make it look wrong. Why is it that the, uh, always, they're always going to be horizontal? Because the light comes across the surface of the water, and even if it's waving, you'll only see it on that straight. And so it's an atmospheric perspective effect. So if you make vertical lines, it'll make it look like it's not water. It'll make it look very much like it's not water. If you do vertical lines, it'll look like it's a wet street with reflections. Oh, so... And it just depends on each thing, but for this light going across the water, that's what you're really, really going to want. You can always give yourself some lighter reflections just by adding a little yellow into your red, and it will stay quite bright. But don't feel like you can't. You want just a few lighter highlights, see? Yeah. Little pops of orange. These colors are always going to feel real nice with this teal background. That's pretty good, though. I don't think we need to do really anything else. And now we get to paint the boats. But I'm going to dry everything because I'm going to show you a trick on how to do these and be happy with them. All right. So while she's doing that, I'm going to say thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Really, really, really enjoy seeing you guys here. I like looking at the, paint, the surface. And stuff. Um, thank you guys for coming and joining us. Make sure you use your air mover on the lowest heat setting. Just as a nice note. That way uh, you don't cause any color shift or anything like that. But, uh, and that's where the, the paint can change color a little bit as it dries. So it can. If you use heat, it will lessen that effect. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to come back with my T-square and do a quick double check. Because, again, what is the biggest deal right now? That it's level. That it's level. Otherwise it looks like the world is tilted. And I'm going to take my aqua here and maybe a smidge of my white so i can really see it and this is the under the arm sherpa technique well it's the use the t-square <laughs> and it you leveled it out yeah because you just well it was level but the the blue and the the blue on the sky and the blue in the water were real close and so it wasn't really showing as the level thing it was Right? And that's just something we wanted to deal with. Now, I'll have to dry this again. But John can tell you where to get all the extra info on the traceable. If you're not loving this process, you can use traceable. 
Oh, yeah. So if you go look in the description down below, you'll find that we have links to our website. And on the left-hand side, you'll see a little section there that says Trace. And that's where you'll find the outlines of these that you can download. Uh, they also make really great coloring pages and things like that. So you can find those there if you're not having so much fun trying to do the drawing. <laughs> The drawing thing. Drawing? We don't want to do no drawing. So I'm going to use my T-square. I'm going to come here. And almost up into this cloud, I'm going to draw a white line. Then I'm going to come back here a little bit. What are you drawing with? A charcoal white pencil. These are in the description down below for sure. Okay. Because I use these all the time. I make a shorter little white line. This is a distant boat. This boat is far away. Boat is off yonder. The boat is off yonder. And maybe I'm going to bring this one over here just a little more. It might space them out more. And this boat, I will give a longer mass to. It's a weird thing. We're just, just being crazy about it. Are we? But now that we have those lines, it'll make the next part a lot easier. If your white paint is dirty or surrounded or in a place, I'm just going to show you an example of this that you can't get to it easily you would at this stage put out fresh white. Oh, yeah. You could do the boats in black if you felt like it. Don't gotta. You just could. And I think for the purposes of what I'm doing, it helps me to do the brush stroke on the, where I put the move the canvas vertically and then stroke across from left to right because I'm right-handed. But if you were left-handed and your dominant, dominant direction was to go from left to right, you would just want to do the opposite of what I'm doing or look at what I'm doing in the mirror or any of those tricks. But really what it is is about just making sure that you're stroking to the comfortable dominant direction, mm. if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. It does. Put it there. Put it there. Do a little one here. It's always fun. Let's get lots more paint on it. All right. So these are like little triangles. And they have this sort of little sweep out. Little sweep out. Little sweep out. And when you get those little triangles swept out, you can join that triangle. And we'll fix them once we move it back to our horizontal, but this way we have the basic shape and direction of where we think we're going. And then it's not as hard. See how we did? So now you can exaggerate elements if you want to widen the sail here and pull it up like that. You can. You will want this to have a strong white appearance in the canvas. So do as many coats as is necessary to get good coverage. Yeah, because you might not have that ballast rock. Right. The <laughs> book club is so good. Did that like freak you out? Like somebody should look at what those stones were so we can find her some more rocks? Let's have another non-segue conversation that no one can follow. All right. So if, if you are in book club, that all made sense. If you're not in book club, I apologize. <laughs> that was so, exactly what we said. We're just painting in these sales. John can explain what we did. In book club, there's a really interesting chapter about white pigment. And I was making a reference to that white pigment. Yes, you were. Do you have to read the book or join book club to know any more than that? Yeah, you do. We don't help you. <laughs> I'm sure the group will help you. We do help. <laughs> that is so not even true. It's like, that's not even how we are. But you so. should join book club because we can't talk too much about it right now. Yeah. We'll make references to let you know. You're just, you're just I'm now I'm going to make a little bit of an implication of a boat underneath. All right? A little implication of a boat. We make these little kind of turned lines. They turn outward both ways. 
that boat's not careful, there may be an implication of cracking below it. No, no cracking. No, there can always be cracking. Kevin is always welcome. And another little implied boat. It is then nice at this stage to come out and take a little of the boat itself, right? And you sort of reflect it in the water. So just little lines back and forth on the horizontal again. And they're going to come all the way forward, right? Because these reflections are long. The sun is low. And if you did Technique Tuesday with us and you did the Bean Man Explains Light Sources, <laughs> you would know that these reflections have to be long because that sun is low. And now everyone's like, wait, what? Yep. Stuff y'all miss if you're not hooked into our tech system. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. Mm -hmm. Good times. They're like, we haven't seen Kevin in a while. We have not seen Kevin in a while. As I, rumor has it, he has been exploring freshwater inlets. You know, those lakes and Estuaries. <laughs> Lakes and estuaries. Woohoo! So, should be careful. You're cruising in a stream. You might find Kevin. Now, I took my brush in and I put it on my brush, and I'm going to make a shadow. Can you see this little shadow under the boats? If you need to add a little black to it, you can. You do want it to be quite dark under the boat. And then I'm going to add a little of it through. You guys catch that? Through the reflection. Because light isn't reflected here. The white is reflected here. Mm. But actually, light is blocked. So these will have a little shadow. Once that is all done and you are happy, go ahead and thin your black paint. And you can see what I'm doing. I take my brush in. I dip it in, not to the metal, but just to the middle. And I bring about a drop out and I thin it around. And you can see that improves the flow. And that's going to give me better fine lines off my brush. If your brush is overly thick with paint, be sure and wipe it off and reload. And we're gonna do little implied sort of grasses over here. And it's just these little flicking strokes. I like to make them random. Random little strokes what you have. When you have reeds, right? And then guess what we get to do? Then hmm. we're done. Yeah? So we get to sign it because we're awesome. We did a painting. Yes, we did now. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to just use my... This is a number for our trip around. That turned out amazing. Now, if you're at home and you're going to you're gonna do some Krakens, please post them up so I can see them. I'm, I'm missing Kevin. I would love to yes. see some Kevins. He's so missing some they're, Kevin. They're talking about Kevin in, in chat. I would love to see your Kevin paintings. Please post them up so I can see them. Kevin, we miss you. <laughs> it's so good to have Kevin. It is. We'll it's see so him. good to have Kevin. But if I did Kevin, I'd have one of these little boats tipped over and he'd be pulling it down with bubbles. <laughs> this, is, this is a nice vacation spot. Get, we'll see yeah, Kevin. This is, this is Kraken eating you free vacation spot. Other vacation spots are not Kraken free. So proceed carefully. Mm. I'm going to face forward. Oh. Oh, uh, dude, you want to go that, there. that nope. way? That way. There. There you are. So now we're kind of looking at our project, and you can take that in. You can see how, even though we've simplified shapes, we've abstracted shapes, we still know what we're looking at. We still know this is a sunset. And almost through the symbolism of these things, we can actually find a simplest, simplistic serenity into it. So I highly recommend you think about maybe taking objects and going like, what is really the line and contour of this? And how can I exaggerate this? and make kind of a symbol and an abstracted conversation about it. 
therefore having more fun in my landscape painting. Tomorrow is going to be a good day. So I hope you guys are going to join us then. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.